water. It's one of the things we take for granted about living in Canada. You can drink water right from the tap. No need to fetch it from anywhere or filter it or boil it. It's clean, free, and readily available. But what if I told you that for some people in Canada, water isn't safe to drink? Yes, it's baffling, isn't it? How is it possible that in the year 2020, in one of the richest countries in the world, some people don't have access to water that's safe to drink? Especially since Canada has water in abundance. Water covers more of Canada than any other country in the world. Who are these people who are deprived of water, you ask? First Nations on reserves. For them, clean water is a privilege. Let's talk about it. Many reserves have advisories warning people to boil water before drinking it or cooking, or brushing their teeth, or even taking a bath. And many of these advisories have been around for a very long time. Some of them date back to 1995. So some people have grown up without ever knowing the sort of clean, readily accessible water most Canadians are familiar with. How could this happen, you wonder? Much of it comes down to Canada's colonial history. Indigenous communities were forced to relocate to reserves in remote areas. Economic development around them polluted their water sources. Normally, it's the provincial government that takes care of water, but not so for First Nations on reserves. The federal government has authority because of its treaty relationship with Indigenous peoples. And First Nations communities get a lot less money because of that. Poor funding and inattention affect every aspect of water systems. Even if you've got a state-of-the-art treatment plant, you still need proper pipes running through communities. Workers need technical training and certification. Parts need to be replaced. Regular inspections are needed. If the ball drops at any point in the process, you get E. coli and viruses and other chemicals in the water which make people sick and cause cancer. You get water shortages, people unable to bathe, and having to worry about buying and fetching and cleaning water is a huge burden on caregivers and those who are poor. Without clean water, living standards plummet. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau promised to end long water advisories by March 2021. His wasn't a perfect solution. For example, it didn't focus on getting water from the source to the tap. Many communities rely on household containers or private wells. They use outhouses or slop hills. They're not included in this plan. But now, Trudeau says because of COVID, he won't be able to fulfill his promise. He's made progress. 90 advisories were lifted since he came into office. Still 60 remain. More than half of communities with long-term advisories are in Ontario. Just a few weeks ago, during COVID lockdowns, the Nishkandaga First Nation were left with no water. The water in their reservoir was contaminated. Many residents had to evacuate to Thunder Bay. Can you believe that Indigenous people still face these struggles today? When we're aware of the history of colonial oppression, when we know about the marginalization and systemic injustices they've experienced, it's even harder knowing that many Indigenous peoples consider water sacred and now find themselves in a dysfunctional relationship with it. As a Canadian, I believe clean running water is a basic need. It's a fundamental human right. As a Muslim, I am further reminded by the Prophet Muhammad to love for others what I love for myself. And I'm called to challenge injustice and oppression wherever I see it. You can join me, learn about this issue, and talk to your family members and friends about it. Email Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations, and the Minister of Health. Tell them everyone in this great country should be able to drink the water coming out of their taps. They should be able to flush their toilets. We can't stand by silently. Let's stand with our Indigenous brothers and sisters and work together to bring about fairness and equality for all. I'm Safiya Ali for Let the Quran Speak.